today's series of videos is on the provocations and the counters that can be done from all six guards using sword, sword and dagger, and sword and cloak. So I'm going to do each of these in turn, uh, showing a few angles for some of the more uh, complex ones. But a lot of these are quite straightforward, but they do have several possibilities for each one, uh, especially as we get into the Punta Reversa suite of actions. There's a lot going on there. So to start off with sword in one hand, or the strata. We are here with our right forward, and this first place I'm in two parts. First one is going to beat with the false edge, as if I'm doing the first defense. And I'm going to turn and put a stramazzone to the head. My response to that is that as I'm getting my sword beat, I'm going to bring my left foot behind and let my partner go on to my point, and I am in face guard. Now the second possibility is if perhaps my opponent has moved their hand too quickly to try to jam their hand against it, like we just did there, but too soon, we're going to beat and then turn that into an impro cut, uh, other go field, and then end with an impro cut up. So again, we are starting here, beat, come up from below, rust, and maybe finish with a start so as the person who has moved too soon, it's okay if I've done this right away. I just need to make sure that I'm ready to move backwards, throwing a three down switch of the arm. So I'll see the side. I've gone to face guard, as low or as high on Coralunga. I'm going to step back and throw a three down switch of the hitting them ideally in the arm on top here. Second possibility is using the true edge to do this. So this is almost identical to our true edge defense with the Mezzo Madrito, except we're going to be stepping into or towards my partner's sword as opposed to away from it. So I beat, press the chest, step around with a number four, ending up with the strata. Now, as the person who is on the receiving end, all he says we do is do a stranzone, which is going to come from so they beat my hand, they beat my sword, it's gonna be knocked over to my right. I'm gonna transition briefly to face guard, but it's not gonna work because of where they're coming in and how quickly it's happening. So I'm going to snap over with this false edge and throw stramats on it as I leave with my right foot ending up in Shinyawe. So again, they beat our sword, transition, snap, and cut. So the false edge part is just the first half of my stramats on it. It's getting it going. Next we have our introduction to Punta Reverso, which is a, uh, an action we see in pretty much every guard we, we, we work with. And this is the, uh, the fundamentals here. So I can do this with a right or left forward, left foot forward. I'm gonna show up with left foot today. So I'm going to step strongly to their right, first into their face, making sure it is their face, otherwise they won't, we won't get the reaction we want. If they parry out, I'm going to go with that. Stepping across in a head guard like position and throwing Mandrito Tonto to the head and then come back to guard. Alternatively, if they don't cover perhaps too much out, they're kind of a bit more bound, I can turn my hand up and do an Ingo Kata to strike into the right side of the chest. So the idea there is that the patient simply defending the false edge or the true edge doesn't really specify, but if someone is doing this, what I should do is use entrave, because they're crossing the side of line, but really threatening me, so as they're coming around, I simply extend and strike the chest. If I were a little bit late there, I don't quite get there in time, I'm still going to start this, but I'm going to step back with the grab so and number four, which will deal with either one of the things I'm going to do, either the tondo or the Imrokata. Next up, we have a thrust to the inside. So we've just gone to the outside, and now we're going to go to the inside, stepping to their left and thrusting to the face. He implies that there is a, an attack to the chest here, but he doesn't actually show what that would be. Could be a mess, could be a mess of the like we saw in the half sword section, 
but again, you can specify so we'll kind of leave that up for now. The knee is simply down and stepping to their left, resting, and then coming back to guard. Now, as the person on the receiving end, I'm going to give the look of a defense by going up to reverse head guard, step around to their inside, and throw cut to the inside of the right arm. We have two more for the sword by itself. We have a attack to the hand, and which is really going to function as an invitation in this case. So once you get a small little cut to the hand, bring it up from behind, so now we're iron gate. If they thrust to our right side, we'll transition to entry and thrust. If we've done that, they start thrusting. We go to cover, they come underneath, we transition to face guard, and we thrust to the chest. Now, it's pretty clear from the counter here that Valgoki does not like this kind of play because his response is, when they give you the invitation, simply transition to Unicorn, and that's the end. So you've interrupted their action. Finally, we have a thrust over top of their sword, which can turn into a Punta Verso, the smarter way to do this, via contact. So essentially, once you play, place my, my sword on top of theirs, if they make any sort of, if they do any sort of response, they push it back, I simply turn my hand up and thrust to the face. He does mention that if they try to bring the sword underneath, I'm doing like a cavazione, as I'm doing this, so I start thrusting and they come underneath, we're still going to turn our hand to entrare and thrust to the chest or face. Now, as the person on the receiving end of this, depending on when I respond, I have one of two things. So if I respond as soon as they are putting my sword, putting their sword on top of ours, we're going to yield to that energy and throw away Mandrito Stramazzoni to the inside of the right hand. If on the other hand they've started doing the Punta Reversa, so I've extended, I'm going to yield this way and hitting them on the outside of the right arm as in the Punta Reversa. So that's it for sword in one hand. Sword and dagger, we have a few more things we can do. Starting with simply getting the sword moving. So we're going to throw two cuts to the sword. A falso drito and a mandrito squalibro. I'm not aiming for anything but the sword. I'm just trying to see what they're going to do. In response to this, I want to step to the side and do something very similar to what we did with the thrust to the inside. And then as they beat our sword, we're actually going to bring this up, step around, and come back to Corunga Strata. So next up, we can also give a stramazzone to their hand, their sword hand. So here, make sure I'm transitioning by creating a wall on one side step across, ending up in the Iron Gate. On the receiving end, we want to simply, when we see that uh, cut, that high cut coming in, we want to pull the thing back, let this blow go past, and attack as we see fit. But again, we've got to look really great there. Third, we can throw a falso to the left hand. So in this case, I would bring my left foot behind and try and strike underneath their left hand, because it is quite advanced with the dagger in the hand. If this is happening to me as the patient, I'm going to place my sword on top, doing what we consider a subjugation, trade, and slice to the throat or face with a tone bow. We have the first Punta in Falso, which is kind of a imbrocato-like action done via false edge fendente. Starting with our left foot doing a triangle step. So here, we're going to snap this over, and the implication is that they do nothing. I simply continue with my thrust and strike them to the left side of the chest. Or they're very, very, very likely to defend. That's what I'm counting on. So if they go to defend, as someone normally would, we come over and we cut to the leg with a mandrito. 
That's the fundamental action here. Now, as the person responding, I have two possibilities. One is much easier than the other one. So uh, I'm going to, as that coming in, I need to get my dagger in the way, so I'm gonna get this here. As they start going low, I can do one of two things. I can step back, striking the hand with a margarito, or if I'm a little bit behind, I can step in, trade, and cut to the thigh with a uriverso. I would certainly prefer to do the first option because it's much, much simpler, but if I'm not that ahead of the game, I may need to come in and defend, trade, and cut. Finally, we have, not finally, moving on to a slightly different uh, set of actions, we have two thrusts and then a kind of unique uh, little bit here. So the first one here is the Punta Reversa, and we have two basic options here. One is the same, so the fundamental action being thrust the face, now we're going to trade, keeping them over here, and cut to the head with the Madrid Fondo. Or because we have this, we can afford to go low on the same side. So we're going to thrust in the face, they defend, cut to the leg, and get out of there. So something we saw right out of the uh, defenses from this card. Now as the person responding, there's the implicit, if they try to do this, I use Entrare to interrupt immediately, which is what I should try to do. If, however, I have covered and they start going for my leg, I just want to take a, uh, use my true edge to defend against this, so using a Ridopio, and then strike to the chest with a, an able on my own, or I'll leave with a cut. So I've defended, they start going low, I'm going to defend against that cut, strike over top, hitting the chest, or I've done my Defense, they start coming. I'm not I'm a little bit I don't this. I'm a little bit behind. I want to cut to the arm. So again, defend. They start coming to the leg. We will step back, ending up in Kolumbuka Alta. Now the next one relies on my partner having a having created an opening in that they're standing in guard, but they have a little bit of an opening up the center. Because their goal is to do the outside slip to us, we're going to defeat that action. So they are standing a little bit open, we're going to thrust up the center. As they start deflecting our sword to cut to our head, we're going to step around, doubling up their weapons, and strike in and throw it into the chest. So do that again. We go up the center. They start to do our sword. We step into it using both weapons and strike to the chest. Now, instead of doing that, what I should do as if someone is coming up the center is use that reverse head guard position and strike to the inside of the arms. Now the final one here is from, they want to use uh, a chasing step. So I'm going to, make sure you can see my feet, I want to bring my left foot in and I'm going to forward. So I don't usually do this because it's pretty risky. I make sure that I'm not giving away any additional movement in my upper body. So I want to be moving around a lot, I want to have just my feet so it doesn't really look from the waist up like I'm doing anything. And so if I do this enough and they don't really notice, they don't care, I get close enough I can just strike them in time of the hand. So in very, very short tempo. As the person responding to this, as soon as I am aware of this, which I'm looking at their sword around with their sword hand, it should be pretty easy to detect, I want to do the same thing we just did and strike to the inside of their right arm with a Rinaso Stavats on it. Coming to our final combination here, we have sword and cloak. We have four plays here, 
and we're going to see some familiarity here. Some place that we have already seen. So we're going to start actually with the punta reversa. And here we have a number of options. Uh, some of these are implicit. Uh, for example, the one being I simply go for cut to the head, but we have some other things that are kind of in between there. Uh, so we can actually look at five possibilities here, even though, even though he only really describes two and a half. So the basic play, again, is a to the face, step to the side, cut to the head with a tondo. Now, the one that he shows is we thrust the face, they defend in some way, and we will either do a second thrust up to the chest, going up the center, we will cut the leg, or we are going to feint a stramazone, or feint that mandrito, and throw a reversal either high or low. So, we're either going to thrust here, cut the leg, come back to guard, we're going to thrust as they bring their sword across to cover, we're going to help them up, freeing up our sword to strike up the middle, or we're going to do a feint and go either high, or like he specifies in the agent's part, we're going to go low, keeping this covering our head. Now as the person responding, we have a number of possibilities here. So if I am dealing with the initial attack, so it's just the, well, I should always try to use entry to stop it. If I have covered and they are doing the thrust of the center, we're going to rely on the outside slip to guide it to our outside and strike to the head with the reversal. If they go to the leg, we are going to want to use uh, using the full edge here and step back. So they have done the attack, we defend against it, they start coming to the leg, we simply step back and strike the leg. Now if they're coming in with this stramazone, I'm going to try to go to like a face guard leg position. So we're defending, they start coming, we defend, we find out that they're in fact going to the right side again, so they're staying on the same side. We're simply going to transition to entrare, enter the face with the one low, entrare, step back and strike the arm. So we've defended, we've come here, they are coming to the high outside, change to entry, and strike to the face of chest, or we defend, defend, they go low, cut the arm. Number two is they're we want to come in with a stramazo into the hand, the sword hand, stepping with our left foot this time, so we'll be ending up in chingiale. So we're here, and we're gonna step across, aiming for that right hand. As the person on the receiving end, the patient, when we see this coming, rather than doing this, which is very difficult to avoid with this big chunk of fabric. We're simply going to transition to Iron Gates, which put us in a great position to follow up with an attack right after Punta Versa in particular. Third set is we're going to harass the left hand with either a thrust or a cut. So a spocata or a reverso, not a mandrito. So we're simply setting behind, trying to hit the hand, or we're stepping behind, trying to cut the hand with the number four. So all we're going to do in response to this is we're going to raise our hand and cut the sword arm, stepping back with the right foot. So as they try to harass the hand, we're going to attack their arm as it's coming in. Finally, we have a fainted thrust up the center so similar to what we saw before, so there needs to be an opening there ready. And depending on kind of how they respond, I can go keep going to the outside, or I can go to the inside. In both cases, I'm using my cloak to 
make this easier. So I'm going to go to the center and we'll go from there. So the idea is I'm fainting up here. They're going to, these clubs are defend, uh, defending, knocking our sword down. We're going to go with that and strike to the head with a revamp so. And this left hand will become, help to suppress their sword, suppress their arm. Alternatively, I could throw my cloak to the face and go to the inside. This is a little bit hard to demonstrate with such a short ceiling, but I'm going to do my best. So we're coming up the center as they start defending it. We're going to keep coming with a thrust, or we're going to come in with a cut to the leg, making sure we're still holding on to the club, we're not tossing it away. So those are two options. We stay to the outside, do the outside slip, or we go to the inside, throwing the cape in their face, and either thrusting or cutting to the leg. Now, in response to either one of these, we're going to be with our true edge using the Mitsumandrito, and then we're going to step back and attack the leg with a reverso. So over here, they do that thrust at the center, we're going to beat whatever they do, we step back and reverse the leg. And that does it for all of the provocations from this guard, all three weapons. In subsequent videos we'll do the same thing, but they will be significantly shorter. Kulung Strat is by far the most complex and the longest section. So look forward to the uh, next ones being Kulung Alta.